What is up guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den, and in this video, Coach Matt is gonna break down some no BS tips when it comes to squatting and increasing your squat. So make sure you check the video out. What's up guys, Coach Matt here from the Lion's Den. It's been a while since I've been on Joey's channel, but I'm happy to be back, happy to be making this video for you guys. So thanks so much to Joey for having me on. Today I'm covering my best squat tips for you guys in honor of something extra special we got coming out for you guys. But you're gonna have to wait for Joey to fill you in on that one. For those of you looking to make a squat your dominant lift, or you've just been struggling with it for a while, I've got you covered today with my best no bullshit methods to your squat where you want it to be. And my very first tip for you guys is something I will always be trying to get more people to buy in on which is just increasing the frequency of the lift you want to improve. So if you want to improve your squat, you have to squat. Should make sense. Stop asking for more and more accessory exercises when you only squat once a week. You don't have underactive glutes, you don't have weak quads, you have an undertrained squat. Yes, I am calling you and your unnecessary accessory exercises out. And I completely get it, people get worried when they hear something like squatting three up to four times a week because they think they're gonna be either too fatigued to continue training or even worse, that they're gonna hurt themselves doing this. So I'm gonna lay out a foolproof way for you guys to squat multiple times a week without dying. All right, so like you may die, but the squats aren't gonna be what does you in is what I mean. Nothing is promised in this life. All right, so say we had to lay out three days of squatting per week, your day one, it's just gonna be a normal old comp. We'll call it a competition squat when we program for things. Uh, and that can be either a high bar or low bar. Does not matter, I'm not gonna start that fight right now. Uh, and you can gear up as you see fit. So belt, sleeves, whatever you wanna wear, gear up as you see fit, normal old squat. Day two can be either a long pause variation or a tempo variation. By long pause, I'm talking like a two or three count pause or any tempo variation that you want and then something for higher reps. So thinking like eight to 10 reps, and you're also not going to belt up on this day. And then your day three can quite honestly be whatever variation you want it to be, SSB or cambered bar, box squats, chains, bands, you name it, whatever variation you wanna work on for day three is fine. And this would also be a day I recommend going beltless, and that's solely to moderate how much load you can put on the bar. I make exceptions for people with low back pain, so people with low back pain will belt up just to kind of mitigate some pain. This kind of setup works and is kind of carefree because the variations themselves are determining how much load you're going to be able to put on the bar. So not every day you're gonna come in is gonna be the heaviest thing you've ever squatted, and not every day you come in is gonna be this RP10 effort, or even really failing reps at all. Squatting multiple times a week, or doing any lift multiple times a week for that matter, is simply just a load and intensity management game to make sure you're not hurting yourself. If this is your first time doing this, do not jump from doing squats once a week to doing squats four times a week. That is a recipe for hating yourself. Work your way up in days, so if you start with one day, do two days for a while, and do three days for a while, then if you wanna do four or five or get more advanced with things, you can dabble into that. If you have something like this set up going already and you still want those extra accessory exercises in because you enjoy them, or you just wanted some extra hypertrophy work, that's cool, that's completely okay. Just understand at the end of the day, there's no exercise out there that's gonna help improve a squat than the squat. That covers the main programming aspect you should be worried about. My second tip for y'all is to definitely work tempo squats into your routine. I'm a big fan of tempo variations for all the main lifts, but I really like them for improving squatting. Squatting is a distinctly vulnerable lift. Sitting down with something heavy on your back is not the most comfortable thing, and you can often get scared in the hole, and tempo kind of solves all those kind of problems for you and makes you a really confident squatter. Tempos themselves are bizarre because they're probably one of the harder variations that you will end up doing, but again, the relative load on the bar compared to a normal squat is still low. Tempo squat solves so many issues for us on the most base level because you are slowing down the reps 
you are now able to think about any cues you want to worry about and focus in on any technique issues you may have. Likewise, again, because we're increasing that total time it takes to complete a rep, we're increasing our total time under tension, which is really good for stimulating hypertrophy. And then probably my favorite reason for adding tempo squats in is you simply get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, tempo sets are hard and that's kind of the point. Even something as simple as six reps, the set feels like you've been squatting forever. Then you have to add on top of that the fact that you have to stay focused for that entire time to maintain the tempo, to maintain tightness. Then you add on top of that the fact that you've been breathing and bracing this entire time. You're low key passing out and trying not to die. And it's just a recipe for you to have a bad time. But the end game payout of tempo squats, beautiful. Now there's a huge variety of tempos that you can do. My most used is probably the 303 tempo squat, uh, just because you have to control the weight on the way down and the way back up, but there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can do. And for those of you that this is your first time hearing 303 tempo, all that means is you are descending for three seconds, the zero means there's no pause in the hole, and then the other three means you're ascending for three seconds. So it's gonna take you three seconds lower, zero pause in the hole, and three seconds to ascend. And from there, there's a whole bunch of combinations you can do. You can do really long descents, you can do a slow descent into a pause in the hole, you can do a slow descent into being as explosive as you can possibly be out of the hole, really anything you want. Just don't get too crazy with it. There is a limit to how far you can take these things. If you haven't had the pleasure yet, highly recommend working tempos into your routine. And my third and final tip for you guys is to not hold your squat back due to minor technique issues. Note, I say minor technique issues. This is again, something I could say for all lifts, but it is distinct in our little strength community with the squat and the deadlift in particular. Because people always got something to say whenever a squat or deadlift video is posted by somebody. And there's a lot of things I can bring up here, but the comment that worries me the most and comes up to just an alarming degree goes a little something like this. This is, this is a catastrophe. I see here that your knees caved approximately five degrees inwards. That was my RP10 Max single. PR actually too. No, no, I cannot allow this. I'm prescribing you squats at 50% until you fix this glaring technique issue. I really don't think it's that big of an issue. Form breakdown's almost expected at maximal effort. You want a broken spine, because that's how you get a broken spine. Here's my issue with this. If you train someone to have perfect technique at 50%, they will develop perfect technique at 50%. The second you give them something that's decently intense again, they're going to have the same fucking problem that they had in the first place. Here's the thing, in a program with an appropriate amount of intensity, you are going to have moments where form breaks down, it's just gonna happen. So you might have your knees cave, you might have to good morning a rep, you might miss depth by a little bit. That's okay, and it's quite honestly expected. As you progress in your lifting career, this becomes progressively less and less of a problem, but I'm not expecting newer lifters or even intermediate lifters to hit you know, intense sets or challenge themselves and not have form breakdown somewhere along the way. A mindset that I really like that has stuck with me is from Uncle Nick of Never Say, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's basically a rep is going to look ugly before it ever reaches perfect. And in this case, he was referring to pushing yourself for new maxes or new PR attempts, so stuff you just haven't done before. And this is just the basis behind how we progress in lifting, how we progress in any life accomplishment you want, the first time you do it is probably gonna be a little bit garbage, but then each time you do it after that, it just gets progressively better, it builds on itself, it compounds to the point where you do reach that near perfect status. But it's gotta start 
at the looking kind of ugly part. And I'm not saying slack off here and ignore your flaws in technique. All I'm saying is they're not an alarm that you need to readdress everything, take all the weight off the bar, and start over from scratch. No. The only way you are going to learn the proper mechanics at heavy weight are completing the proper mechanics with the heavy weight. So you have to keep that intensity up and you just work on being better and better every single time you come in. If you mess up something, you've got it recorded or someone tells you, then you fix it for next time. You don't just freak out and take everything off the bar and rebuild from there. I guarantee you will destroy the person that keeps resetting themselves when they have technique flaws. If you just build your technique and progressively increase the weight at the same time. You do not have to be perfect every single time. But that's all I got for you guys for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for those of you that made it this far. Joe, as always, thanks for having me on the channel. I truly do appreciate it. And hope to see you all in some way, shape, or form in the future, guys. Catch you later. All right, first off, just wanna say thank you so much to Coach Matt for putting that video together. You are the man. Let's give him a round of applause. And make sure you guys head over and subscribe to Matt's channel. He is an awesome coach, has tons of knowledge, and you want to make sure that you are following him as he's going to pursue his YouTube career as well as getting involved with strength sports. All right, guys, next big announcement. We are finally releasing the squat-specific program. So if you guys are looking to get your legs stronger or just increase your squat in general, this is going to be the program for you. It also incorporates the other main lifts, so you will be doing your bench, your deadlift, and your overhead press, and other variations, but it's going to have the emphasis specifically on the squat. Now, we put a ton of work into this program, which is going to give you guys lots of resources and videos that are just going to piggyback off of the things that we've been talking about and help you build the best, strongest legs and squat possible. We really appreciate your support, so if you guys want to go check out the link down below, it is Squattober, so we figured it kind of just made sense to put out a squat program this month. Uh, but we, like I said, we really appreciate the support, and hopefully you guys check it out and you're going to get some amazing results. That's all I got, guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all the videos that we are pumping out. Lots of good stuff coming up in the future. But until then, guys, stay in Lean Mean Strike Machine, and I'll see you next time. Peace!